Hi, this is my Juniper SRX initial configuration video. I'll be showing you how to get a Juniper gateway up and running once you've uh, taken it out of the box. So, a uh, factory default uh, SRX device. Uh, I'm using the device in front of you, which is an SRX 110A model, which consists of um, eight fast Ethernet ports, these ones here, uh, a one port for ADSL VDSL connection, a uh, console port for management purposes, and there's also a 3G connection, which you can use as a backup one connection. I'll be using an Ethernet port for management purposes, but you can also use this console port here. Um, on the device, ports FE001 to here to FE007. Uh, these are switch ports in a VLAN, so they all share the same, they are within the same broadcast domain, uh, and, and configured in a security zone called Trust. And the VLAN interface is assigned an IP address of 192.168.1.1, so uh, you can reach the IP through any of these ports. Uh, by default, the DHCP server is enabled on the Layer 3 VLAN interface as well. So if you plug into any of these uh, ports from FE001 to FE007, uh, you'll get an IP address assigned in the 192.168.10/24 range. Um, the gateway itself, of course, is the 192.168.1.1, so that's what we will be connecting to. So as long as my laptop is listening for DHCP, uh, it's automatically assigned to uh, look for an IP address, uh, then it will be assigned an IP address uh, in that range. Um, you can also take these uh, out of uh, layer 2 switch port mode, so these ports. Um, I'll be showing you that in a, another video, so you can put them into a layer 3 routed interface, uh, so you can use them as a routed interfaces and assign them IP addresses individually if you wanted to. Um, also, security zones, which I'll cover in a later video as well, uh, they're basically used to group one or more interfaces, then security policies uh, and other settings are applied to uh, security zones. So you might have an internal zone, DMZ zone and an internet zone, uh, and security policies are created between them, uh, which interfaces are bound to. Uh, by default, the internal zone or your internal network, they've called it trust, and the external or the internet or the WAN, they've called it untrust. Uh, also by default, there's a source NAT to untrust zone interface uh, is also configured so users can get out to the internet using a single public IP address. So once we go through the wizard, get the SRX up and running, these uh, settings are configured by default. In this video I'll only be showing you how to get it up and running and then we can go and have a look at the uh, interface in another video. So um, there's a couple of security policies as well configured by default which allows trust to untrust zone traffic which is basically internal to uh, out to the internet, uh, but denies the other way, so denies untrust zone to trust zone traffic. Uh, and this single IP, sorry, this single port here, uh, FE000, is configured in the security zone untrust, so the internet side, and is assigned as a DHCP client, so it's there to receive an IP address if you connect it to an ISP, for example. Um, so I'll plug my cable in. So the um, my laptop, which is connected to the SRX, on this port here. So it's plugged in now. And if we open up a command prompt, I'll just make sure we've got an IP address in the 192.168.1.0.24 range, which it has, which is 192.168. Dot one dot three. So it should be good to go. We should be able to connect to the JWeb interface and uh, configure the SRX device. So if we open up uh, Mozilla Firefox and browse to it, by the way, it's HTTP colon slash slash one nine two dot one six eight dot one dot one. And that's got us there. So the username is root, and there is no password. So just log into the device. Okay, so that's brought us to the introduction initial setup. You have to follow this wizard uh, and um, just, just follow the uh, menu on the left hand side. It will take you through it as you uh, start from here and you keep clicking next. So if we click start here and we come to the configure, configure system identification. So Give it a host name, I'll call it SRX. Give it a domain name, I'll give it chaffsec.com. And provide a root password. So 
I'll specify the password and then we can click next here on this page by the way the, there's some stuff that is optional and that's marked with an asterisk so if we go back you can see these asterisks so that that's sorry that's mandatory if there's no asterisks then it's optional so domain name is optional here so if we click next again so all this is optional but we could uh, provide a default gateway if we wanted to so 10 dot 10 dot 20 dot 50 uh, we can specify DNS servers the default gateway IP will override the gateway IP acquired through DHCP which is fine and there's a couple already in here for you but you can put the Google one in as well and click OK click Add sorry so that's gone in there um, and if your device can reach several different domains you can configure these as a list of domains to be searched here um, basically Junos then uses this list to set an order in which it appends domain names when searching for the IP address of a host so you can do that from here but we'll click next and you come to the interface groups uh, again this is optional you could uh, have a look at the uh, switch ports which are configured for VLAN ID 3 and you could uh, change these around so you can take interfaces out of the VLAN for example like that click save we can also add uh, to add further VLAN so you give it a VLAN ID you add the ports in here as well and then you've created a new VLAN with uh, switch ports so I'll just cancel that and click next so we've come to the configure interfaces and uh, here you can configure your layer interfaces um, so we've got VLAN 0 we've got a physical interface here we've got another interface here so we could uh, double click that and then you could um, configure this for me you can change it to DHCP or leave it as IP address and you can also specify the services and the protocols that the interface will listen on and also you can specify the security zone so by default these are the security zones trust on trust Junos host and you can add a new security zone from here as well okay we'll just cancel that and leave it as it is and could click next this page uh, gives you the option to uh, once you log in which uh, page you will initially land on um, most probably the dashboard is the most common one so every other security device every other firewall I've seen it's always the dashboard you land on first uh, Juniper have it on configure by default by the looks of it because the dashboard takes a while to load and the JWeb commit option uh, validate every time and um, explicit commit in the end so you want to validate uh, any configuration changes so I'll always go with the top option here and click next and this is your time settings so you can configure time settings current system time reset manually uh, configure it here you can specify your time zone here so for me it'd be Europe London which is here and optionally you can configure your NTP server as well here if you want to sync with an NTP server click next finally you can review and commit your changes so you can review it here before committing once clicking on committing it will go away and configure the device uh, by the way the JWeb interface is not the fastest device to use uh, most engineers will probably prefer the command line um, and enterprise companies actually use centralized management systems such as uh, NSM or Juno Space uh, Security Director. So it's putting the changes in effect now. Once these are done, it will uh, let us uh, log in to the device. Okay, let's uh, refresh that usually it give you an option just to click OK but it just timed out for some reason so the username is root and now we have to specify the password we configured in the wizard so if I specify my password login that should log me into the device
again as I mentioned it's a, a quite a slow product and it's uh, come to the dashboard screen so um, you could see the overall uh, dashboard screen so system identification the system alarms the resource utilization and security resources we'll have a look at all of these options in another video thank you for watching